Welcome again to our free Saturday Zoom meeting. Each week we will explore the inner journey of Tantra Sadhana as practiced by yogic seers of India very successfully. This meeting offers you an opportunity to work with the universal Shakti by exploring the secret of mantra sound frequency of the deities, planets, gunas within our subtle body. So look forward to seeing you every Saturday. So welcome everybody. Today, instead of me doing a lot of the talking, Asha is going to do a lot of the talking, and I'm going to be playing the backup role because um, I've been talking too much about about women's yearning. It's time a woman talks about women's yearning. But before we can start talking about okay, why is the yearning important? Because with the Mahavidya goddesses. They reside also within the yoni. So unless you understand that energy within the yoni and how the worship can be done, you're not actually in touch with your own yoni. So the feminine energy is very important because you are connected to the universal womb. Until you can reconnect to the universal womb, which is not by your fault, but how society has evolved over the last um, 2,000 years, maybe 2,000, 200 years, or two, three, let's say 3,000 years, okay? How it's evolved, where sex has become from a sin to now a double sin, as far as I'm concerned, because not because sex itself is sin. The way we use our genitals, we are the only species on earth that finds happiness or connection with the opposite sex through the genital. When you talk about love, you talk about sex. Sex is not for pleasure seeking on them. It's for spiritual growth. So in that sense, you have to come to the stage of understanding that it is a divine vehicle for spiritual growth, not someone something seeking for pleasure. The pleasure you seek through your genitals is limited to virtually nothing much. Okay, there are students of mine who can experience the same pleasure by just doing mantras. So you want to go to the state, which clearly states that that is the principal way of actually finding peace, happiness, and pleasure without having to depend on a second person. And when a man and a woman comes together, when the lingam and the yoni unite, it's a cosmic dance. But to experience a cosmic dance, first of all, both men and women have to honor their genitals. Because if you look at um, those who have gone to India and have gone to a Shiva temple, you worship the Shiva Lingam. It's basically the Lingam united with the Yoni. Even the gods worship the Yoni of the goddess to attain their power. So for men, it's very important to know that it's not something for pleasure. I mean, the pleasure a man gets is the worst. At least a woman, when she gets pleasure, she gets good pleasure. For a man, it only lasts a few seconds. And when the woman is not ready to receive the man, he feels tired at the end of the day. Instead of feeling energized that he, he had a sacred union and feel the whole energy in his body rise, He's kundalini rising and feeling a lot of power. He actually goes into a being weak. And he goes to sleep while the woman scratches their head and says, what else is there? Both men and women, to discover the yearning, not so much the vagina, okay, remember this. Vagina is only one part of it. It's the whole womb, the whole creative force within the womb. Remember the womb gives us the passageway to come to this world, both for both men and women. So we have to learn to honor them. And what's more is to understand that the Mahavidya goddess that starts from your pubic hair, right up to the womb, right up to your crown is connected. This is why a woman is known as a carrier of energy rather than men. We, both men and women, depend on a woman, how she holds her energy together. So when you talk about a priest, and priestess, priestess is the highest. But for you to be a priestess, you have to first understand your own body. You have to be able to bring up the energy within every cell 
of your body and which is not impossible. It is very fast. You can attain it faster than a man. That science, Bharatan Nina Shakti Yoga is very good at. Instead of making love to the physical body, you learn how to make love to the subtle body. There's a physical body in the subtle body. The subtle body is really you. It's like saying, I polish my car, but I don't take care of the motor. What happens if the motor breaks down? The polished car can't do anything. So when you talk about makeup, dressing, you spend a lot of time in front of the mirror trying to look good, but you don't spend enough time. You know, a lot of people ask me, can I achieve everything in 20 minutes, 30 minutes of sadhana? I always say, if you can live out of breathing for 20, 30 minutes, only. Your sadhana is every breath. Sadhana is not about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, half an hour. The one hour or two hours of sitting down and you're doing mantra is basically to connect your breath, to connect the energy of breath that goes into every cell in your body. Because the breath that you take is sound. So you're doing third, two hours of mantras every day, only till you get the movement, can you, until you start feeling the the energy in every cell in your body, when your fingers are tingling, everything in your body tingles when you do much, then you're ready to start. So minimum anyone has to do is minimum two hours of mantra. That is a great start in life. But if you can't, for some strange reason, okay, you take, it takes you longer. Remember that most of you are carriers of energy. All the women here are carriers of energy, and we men need you. And those of you who have a son, remember that your son is deprived of growth because you did not subscribe to the science. Okay, now Asha will, I mean, Asha got all four girls. So she needs to train her daughters to be able to make them, make sure that the men they come into their life know how to honor the sacred yearning. There are a lot of women in the world today, or a lot of men, women, who talk about the sacred yearning, womb empowerment, Womb this, womb that, without knowing the Vedias, be it, you know, even in the Egyptian tradition, it's very linked to the Yoni, you know, the Tantra, Tantra, which basically dealing with the energy of the sacred womb. So whether you are practicing Egyptian goddess ritual or Tantra, you need to know the divine feminine within you. You have to also know the fundamental thing, like a lot of women like to fashionably remove their pubic hair. That's the first mistake you make. The first step to disempowering yourself. When you remove your your sacred pubic hair, you're removing Chinnamasta, one of the goddesses that guards the sacred gateway. The opening of the jhana is a gateway to the womb. It's not something to seek pleasure totally only. You want to attain spiritual pleasure, that is your most powerful gateway. If you want to be zero, then you use that gateway for just pleasure. That pleasure which is not really pleasure, which is absolutely limited to the physical that lasts only while it happens and maybe an hour or half an hour after that. Then after that, the ego thing. Oh, I had I made love. You didn't make love. Because even the animal kingdom, they do better job than we do as humans. Okay, now Asha, I'll let you do the rest of the talking about the yearning tantra. Babaji, would you like to share the mantras after I talk a little bit about Yoni Mantra? Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry yoni uh, Tantra. I, I'll do the mantra for the Yoni Ganesh and then Yoni straight. Um, Shri Hari Kali Glum Gang Ganapade Namaha Um I'm Clean. Oh, sorry. I was going to the. Uh, I've not finished the Ganesh month. Um. Shreem, Harim, Kleem, Glung, Gung, Ganapadeye, Namaha Om, Om, Shreem, 
Kerim, Klim, Klang, Gang, Ganapade, Namahaum, Om, Trim, Kerim, Klim, Klang, Gang, Ganapade, Namaha Om Om Trim Harim Klim Glam Gang Ganapadeye Namaha Om Most of the mantras, when they have Klim, it is for karma, which is for pleasure, okay? And the sound goes down to the genitals. So even imagine, even the mantras play, or, or most of the mantras work on your second chakra energy to go up. Then the mantra for the yoni is, or the second chakra is, Om, I'm, clean, sau, sau, clean, I'm, Om. So when you do that mantra, you do to the third eye, Going down to the yearning. Om. I'm. Clean. So. So. Clean. I'm. Om. Om, I'm clean, so, so clean, I'm Om. So what this mantra does is it works between your third eye to the genitals or the yoni, and now we're talking about yoni. This is yoni, yoni mantra, but men can use it as well. You go down to the genitals, and from the genitals, you take it up to the third eye again. You try to connect these two energies. I mean, imagine this thousands of years ago, the Hindus knew tantra, they knew it. Today, science says, Oh, a lot of what you think is how your vagina acts. Now they connect science in, uh, only I think last year or this year, last year yeah they realized that they both they are totally connected the reason they are connected is because of motherhood they're more connected in a woman than in a man men don't have that gift because you're connected to the universal womb you've got to be always connected but unfortunately most women don't even know that as I said not your fault this is this this empowering this empowerment of women started about 5,000 years ago, but accelerated itself about 3,000 or as soon as Christianity came into being. That's all. So now you women have to regain your power. Forget about what happened to you in the past, but know that whatever your age is, whether you are very young kid or whether you are in your 60s, you still need to awaken them. Because at least then you go leave this world feeling complete. Okay, Asha, now your turn. Thank you, Babaji, Vanakam, um, sisters, and Babaji, thank you so much for all of your wisdom and what you share with us. And so I'll, um, Babaji has asked me to share a little bit with you all about um, the Yoni and the Yoni, and Yoni Tantra and these practices, these ancient practices. And as Babaji mentioned, um, Yoni is a, is the Sanskrit word, not just for the vagina, as he mentioned, but for the entire female reproductive system, and for including the womb. And it is considered um, a sacred temple. And in Tantra, the yoni is seen as a yantra, so this um, geometrical, this sacred geometry within the body. And as he mentioned, it is the dwelling place of um, the universal creative energy or what we call Shakti. And so in 
in the tantric tradition, these practices that Babaji is um, so graciously sharing with us, um, the yoni, as he said, has been so disrespected um, and gradually over thousands of years. And now we see this this big culmination of thousands of years of oppression and suppression of woman's power. But in the tantric tradition, the yoni is seen from this perspective of deep love and respect. And it's seen as um, this great power in woman and that which is empowering to men, to all men. And so as he mentioned, for those with sons and the masculine, then um, in order to receive the power of Shakti, to receive the power of woman, then men must learn to worship her with love and with deep reverence. And so our womb, our yoni, the whole entire of the re female reproductive system is connected to the Divine Mother and to all of creation. And um, I always like to share it as like the womb being a holographic imprint of the cosmic womb. And as he mentioned, not just this physical organ. And then all of the ancient traditions um, revered or, and were birthed out of womb wisdom because all of the blood in, in men, even in men, you know, originated from menstrual blood. And in ancient times, it was considered highly powerful and potent. And it was always used in, in rituals and making of these magic, magical, powerful elixirs and potions that were ingested and used on the body. And um, so in the, in the tantric worship of the yoni, um, it's, a, it's a meditation and visualization but there were also there were also sexual practices even though the west has taken that and twisted it and made it to seem that <laughs> tantra is all about sex and sexual practices when that is not the case and babaji has shared you know many times on that and the appropriation of uh westernized or bastardized versions of what is called tantra and um so by it's said that by worshiping the yoni, um, we worship the goddesses, we worship the Dasha Mahavidyas, and um, they are in specific places in the yoni, as Babaji has mentioned to us. And so throughout the yoni tantras they and, and the tantric texts, there's so much talk about the beauty and the reverence and the power that comes with worshiping the yoni. And we hear about this um, yoni worship increasing power in men and there is a um, there is this idea and this knowing of this deep sacredness that comes and the power that comes from worshiping her and that there's a purity in that so it is not um, Babaji had put a, a quote in the chat from one of the tantras that talked about um, how there's no, um, let me click on the chat just to, to refer back to that, how, a regard, how we regard semen and how we regard menstrual fluid and how they're not to be um, regarded with disgust. There's um, um, from the Kalavali um, Nimaya Tantra, there says there are people who regard semen and menstrual fluid with disgust, but they forget, this is what he put in the chat, that the body by which they hope to attain liberation is composed of these two forms of matter, that the marrow, the bone, the tendons have come from the father and the skin, flesh, and blood from the mother. And so this idea of all things being pure, but our mentality is what is evil, is what this is portraying to us, that there is no, um, there is no disgust in the things of the body. And the tantras also regard women and female gurus very highly. And to share a few quotes to you from the um, Yoni Tantra and that Babaji has shared with us and I've shared with those of you who have been in embodying the goddesses in um, the Yoni Tantra and Patala 7 says women are divinity, women are life, women are truly jewels. And there's also another um, 
quote in um, the Shakti Sangama Tantra that says a woman is the god that talks about woman as being the goddess, and it says, "Worship carefully a woman or a maiden as she is Shakti, sheltered by the kulas. One should never speak harshly to maidens or women." Um, just again echoing the reverence of even speaking an ill word. Um, there's another quote that says, in Kaula, every woman is thought of as a manifestation of the goddess and that no man may raise his hand, strike or threaten a woman. And we see that so much happening now, especially today, the abuse of woman, the abuse of the earth, which is mother nature. He says, though, when she is naked, men must kneel and worship her as the goddess and that she has equal equal rights with men on all levels. And so this idea of the power of woman and the power of the womb and what is how when we empower our own wombs as women and understand the power of the yoni and don't misuse it um, and then men are empowered in that same way we birth we give birth to men we are the first teachers we're the first guru so it is our responsibility um, to share this information, to first empower our own wombs and know our bodies, as he says, and then share that information. And um, when we are empowered, we are in turn empowered by nature. We empower all of those around us. There's a um, another tantric text that talks about that, that instructs men um, to recite their mantra inwardly whenever they even see a woman to be in such reverence in that way that when they see women that they start to uh, recite their mantra inwardly because of the reverence that they have. There's another verse that says women are heaven, women are dharma, and women are the highest penance. Women are Buddha, women are the sangha, and women are the perfection of wisdom. So again, seeing throughout the tradition of this beautiful reverence that is um, given to woman and the yoni and but they also share that through these practices these yoni puja the practices of worshiping woman and worshiping the yoni all of the siddhis are the powers that are received by men from doing such the in the sharing of the um of the yoni tantra um as the, as, the, as this, all this wisdom is being shared uh, to Parvati uh, by Mahadeva, the, the great God or Shiva, he talks about how all, there's all of these um, worships and practices that we can have, but he always describes that the most important and the chief practice is the worship of the yoni. And he talks about how all of the gods of creation were all originated from the yoni. So this is where we worship and honor. And that um, there's a reverence for the menstrual blood, the menstrual flowers, and how doing puja to the worshiping the yoni and the blood gives you this um, ability to attain moksha or liberation. And so they go through all of these methods and ways of of worshiping the yoni, um, how to worship daily, how we attain the highest um, essence, that man who worships the yoni attains the highest essence, and how when he recites the 1,000 names of the goddess that he becomes liberated and becomes the son of Kali, and he becomes the lord of yoga, and even down to these beautiful, um, these beautiful strotas that talk about having seen the, the yoni full of menses after bathing and reciting the mantra that a man becomes Shiva on earth. And so we can think about how far we are from this idea of the sacred blood being sacred, the yoni being sacred, whereas now we see in this time that is revered with disgust or as Babaji says, just a thing solely for pleasure and not um, understanding the power that lies within. And Babaji, he mentioned and talks a lot about how the, the, um, the wisdom goddesses lie, these wisdoms lie within our sacred, our sacred womb in our sacred yoni in this space. And we, this, these teachings of Paratan and Ashakti teach us how to 
know this power and how to awaken this power through awaken the, them and honor and worship them through the mantra practices. So the, the masculine, as he worships, he awakens that wisdom on the inside and becomes powerful and receives these cities. Woman awakens the powers within and becomes the goddess. Um, the worship of the yoni bestows grace. And in these teachings, they do stress also the importance of these practices not being done with a carnal mind. They call them a Pashu. The Pashu is the man that is still in his animal nature <clears throat> and has not yet come to, when we're talking about Yoni Puja, like actually worshiping the Yoni in that way. So of course, these mantra practices that Babaji is sharing with us for a man that is still considered in the Pashu state will receive great benefit by clearing out those imprints and cellular memory so that he can worship woman in that way to receive the benefits and the power and the beauty but the worship of the yoni was bestowed grace in the life and um, you are not supposed to engage which we see so much in the west these practices of these neo-tantric practices of us uh, just lascivious sex and um, so-called worshiping of the yoni through these actual sexual practices by um, those who are still in this who are still pashus who are still um, have a carnal view or are just seeking pleasure or seeking to have better orgasms and all these things that we see associated with tantra now in the west which aren't truly related to the uh, traditional tantric practices but they caution of the dangers of even that practice as a Pashu and how it would bring harm to you. And we see this with so many spiritual teachers who have, or so-called Tantra teachers that have fallen, all of the scandals, all of the abuses that happen because of a taking of sacred teachings and distorted them, distorting them. So it's so beautiful that we are able to receive these traditional teachings and work with clearing our cellular memory, um, activating the wisdom, awakening the wisdom on the inside so that we are able to operate in integrity, to awaken in a way of fullness and not um, cause harm. Also, these these practices, this to circle it back around, and then I'll hand it back to Babaji because I don't want to talk too much longer, but um, I want to turn it back to Babaji. To, but I want to bring it back around full circle to these particular practices that we receive to him because we know and understand that this is our power source. This is where the goddess lies. It's so important that we return to that because we see the state of the world and where we are going and there's a reflection of what's happening outside of us because of what's happening inside of us. And we've lost this reverence for the womb, the reverence for the yoni. And it has affected not only, it has affected all of creation. And when there's no reverence for woman and the mother, we see there's no reverence for the earth. And we're seeing the destruction of the earth and all of her resources and just a taking, a taking, a taking without a reverence. And we're seeing a destruction. And Babaji sharing, shares with us that, um, this is a dangerous time that we're in and that we have to change the trajectory. And we as women begin by understanding, awakening the power of the womb, not using or misusing this very sacred space. So we have to want to awaken and remember. And then men, he, he, he always shares that men, they come along. <laughs> they come along there. We're the first teachers. You know, we have to, we have to awaken this wisdom first and then, and men need to be initiated into these teachings. But to circle back around and close this for the this Padatan in a Shakti way of, of working with the mantras. We awaken the wisdom and the wisdom goddesses, the wisdom on the inside via the mantras because the goddesses, these wisdoms, um, are their mantras. They reside in the mantra. The mantra is the vehicle. And when we chant these mantras, we imprint them in our subtle body, right? 